Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. This is the Corsair K70 keyboard, and as you can probably see, it's got some keys missing. There's a very good reason for it. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at keycaps, and uh, yeah. Mine were falling off, and you're probably having the same thing, hence probably why you're watching this video, and you want to know ways of how to fix it. So, keycaps coming off is a very common thing. Quite often, obviously, they are quite slim stems on these keys, and as you can probably see from some of the cutaways and b-roll we filmed, especially with double shot ones, potentially there's a lot of places for potential failure. Because you've got your Cherry MX type switches, there isn't really a great deal holding the keys in place. And if you're slightly over vigorous with your gaming, or maybe you've bought a used keyboard such as this one, then you may find that the previous owner may have been a little bit less than careful with it. So there is going to be some fracture points and some weak areas. Quite often what you'll find is when you're actually using the keyboard and it's on certain angles or you're pressing certain keys in certain places, the keycaps have a tendency to just uh, pop off, which is really annoying. And then you have to search underneath your desk to find out where the heck the keycaps have gone. So how can you actually fix that? Now, the problem is actually working out what the issue is. Potentially, it could be the actual switches themselves have worn down slightly, or maybe some of the little kind of fingers which are sticking out have worn off slightly. If that is the case, this is the best case scenario. Well, it's not, but it is. You can, if you want to, on some keyboards, you can actually remove the switches themselves. They may be on your keyboard, actually hot swappable, in which case you can get a puller, remove the switches, and that's absolutely fantastic. You can put your keycap back on, and you're off to the races. If you've got a keyboard which has soldered key switches, then things get a little bit more difficult and potentially a little bit more complicated, in which case you have to strip down the keyboard. Obviously, if your keyboard's under warranty, I wouldn't suggest doing this, but if you're out of warranty, then heck, you've got nothing to really lose. So you can take it apart, desolder the switches, put in a new switch, and again, absolutely fantastic. But if you're like me and you've got a problem with the actual keycaps themselves, where unfortunately the uh, little stems inside have actually fractured, which is an extremely common thing. There's various fracture points in there because of the way they're actually shaped. There's probably a good eight or nine ways that they can actually split, especially if the key's been hit on an angle, it can really fracture these very, very easily. So what can you do? Now, the first thing you can try and do if you want to, if the fracture isn't too bad, or maybe it's just these have worn down slightly, a really good method of doing it is some cling film. Now, this is the sort of stuff that we use here in the UK and probably elsewhere around the world. You can get it for the home. Essentially, you just stretch it over plates and things like that to keep food fly free and keep dust off it or keep it fresh, that kind of stuff. Most of you have probably got this lying around in your house somewhere. So this is a really easy way of just making your keys stick on. What you can do is get some scissors and just cut out a very, very small square, probably about four or five mil. It doesn't have to be much bigger than that, just enough so that you can actually physically hold it. Place it over the top of the key switch then get your keycap and push it over the top and that extra little bit of padding on the actual switch itself will most likely actually hold your keycap in place. Certainly you can try that if you want to. Now, if you've got keycaps like these where the fracture points are actually quite deep into the plastic, actually putting something on the top of these switches in order to pack it out may actually fracture them even more. So in which case it's time to get out the old trusty glues. Now there's various glues you can use. I would probably avoid using super glue if at all possible. Super glue, because of the chemicals it gives off, and when it's kind of curing, it gives off a vapor, which can often leave those kind of white powdery burn marks on plastics and the surrounding items. And that's the last thing you want on your expensive keyboard. So if you are trying to get some glues, get something like Yoohoo, which is a kind of safe universal glue. This is probably your best bet. It's actually quite thick, not the easiest to use, so you do have to be a little bit careful, but this is definitely an option. Alternatively, you can get something like the JB Plastic Weld, again, safer plastics, a little bit more complicated to use. You can mix it up and you can use it. It is pretty decent stuff. And if you want to see how we've used it previously, you can check out the video up here. So that's the sort of glues you want to use, basically anything which is plastic safe, because obviously we're working with plastic switches, or at least the bit which connects to the keycap is plastic. And obviously the keycaps themselves are plastic. Now, if you've got this far in, you're thinking, oh God, glue, all this kind of stuff, that's a little bit scary. Don't worry, we've got you covered. There will be links in the video description below where you can actually buy replacement keycaps. You can get either individual ones, which will cost you somewhere in the region of about three or four pounds per key, which potentially if you've got a couple of keys broken, might be not the cost effective way of doing it. 
So there is also going to be links of four keycap sets. Now these are going to be semi-universal depending on obviously key switches you've got. If you're not entirely sure, feel free to ask in the comments section and I'll try and find out the exact ones for you. And obviously your region as well because that is going to be coming into it. Here in the UK, we have a specific keyboard layout. We have a slightly different enter key, shift keys, and obviously things like the at sign and the commas are kind of mixed around. So you don't want to buy keycaps necessarily, which are for a different region. Otherwise, it's going to get really confusing when you try to use your keyboard. Most manufacturers do their own ones, which are specific replacements. Now, this particular keyboard, the Corsair K700 RGB Mark II, actually has a full set available, which you can purchase from either Corsair directly, or you can buy it from Amazon. Again, links will be in the video description, so you can check it out. Again, not entirely the most cost-effective way of doing it. An entire set for this particular keyboard is around about £30, hence why uh, yeah, we're probably going to go down the glue route. But certainly, if you have got a load of damaged keys or you just can't be bored to faff around, that is definitely an option, albeit not the most cost-effective one. So moving on, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's go with the glues. Now we're gonna be testing two glues on this particular episode of Mike's Unboxing. So we're gonna do one key with the Yoohoo glue and we're gonna be doing another key with the JB Plastic Weld. Both of them have got their differences. The Yoohoo glue is probably slightly easier to use as we'll be seeing shortly. The two part JB is a little bit more difficult to use, does require a little bit more time and consideration, but actually it's got a slightly better consistency and definitely will have a slightly stronger bond. So depending on how much of a fracture you've got actually in your stems, you may want to go with the stronger glue. So let's go through some of the tools which you may find useful for actually doing this particular process. So obviously, in terms of glues, obviously your Yoohoo glue, your JB Weld. Another thing you may want is a small flat-headed screwdriver. This is going to be really handy for actually looking and examining your switch. I'll show you an example of that now. So when I took off one of the switches, we took it off and using the actual flat edge of the screwdriver, very gently, we just touch the sides of the actual stem itself and just see where the fractures are. If you put a little bit of pressure on, not too much pressure, because obviously you could actually damage the stem even more so, which is uh, yeah, pretty catastrophic, but just a little bit of pressure and you can widen out the gaps between them just to see where the fractures are. Now, I actually got Kath to have a look as well. We both took a look and I found a couple of fractures. Kath found a couple of fractures in places that I didn't notice. So with this, very worthwhile getting a magnifying glass or just a second pair of eyes just to confirm what sections need to be glued. Now obviously if you want to be ultra careful and ultra precise and uh, cover the whole thing, you can if you want to, which is something we have done, is actually use something like a cocktail stick, such as these wooden cocktail sticks. These are actually really good for applying glue. They are also known as toothpicks, which I'm trying to say properly. And this actually makes application very, very straightforward and simple. So rather than undoing your glue and trying to actually get a neat line of glue actually on those fracture points, getting a stick such as this, a cocktail stick or even a match stick if you want to, you can cut it down a little bit. All you'll need to do is to put the stick into the glue, twist it round a little bit, and then when you pull out the stick, you'll have a very fine layer of glue actually on the stick. If you don't get quite enough, you can get a little bit more out and just twist it round until you get a little bit on there. As you can see, this is quite gloopy stuff, but this is actually a really good way of doing it. So then you can just use the cocktail stick, get your keycap, and literally just touch in the areas which need glue in. This is a really fine way of doing it. Now, the reason we're doing this is because with these actual switches and keycaps, quite often when you push the key all the way down, it will interfere with some part of the switch. So don't go filling the whole thing up with uh, like plastic cement or something like that. You do want to be very careful and very, very light with your glue application. So again, on a cocktail stick or a matchstick, toothpick, whatever you want to call it, very easy to do. Just get a, a fine layer of glue and just run it down through those fracture points. Now, of course you can, if you want to, you can do the same thing with super glue if that's all you've got to hand. But again, do go very lightly with it because of the chemicals it gives off. And obviously you don't want to get it actually inside the stem if you can help it, because that's going to make matters even worse. When you're doing this, obviously I would suggest trying to get a nice clean surface to work on. And ideally, if you can get some sort of cloth so you don't damage any of your surfaces, uh, we just use a microfiber cloth, which we find absolutely fine. When you're using the two part glues, obviously do be careful because they will need mixing. So get something to mix it on as well. Keep all your things to hand. You probably see from some of the footage that we've already done. So I actually used a, uh, a cat lid from the, the food to peel off the lid, fed the cats, and then use the lid to actually mix up the compound on. So it's a two part compound, stir it around. You can actually use your toothpick or cocktail stick to stir it around. And then with the residue, which is actually on the stick itself, 
you can go ahead and do exactly the same thing. So just literally get some on the end and kind of just drag it along those fracture points. Probably best when you do this, have a magnifying glass or even just use your phone or camera, zoom right in and then you can do it and just look on a monitor or look on the screen to see if you're doing a good job. Obviously, if you're a little bit younger than me and you've got really good eyesight, then you can probably just do it by eye, but uh, I find it a little bit tricky. So definitely try and use something to magnify what you're looking at. When you're actually putting the glue on, one of the important things to do is obviously minimal glue because you don't want too much packing out the inside of your cap and also make sure that there's no glue which actually goes over the top so it doesn't add any additional height to the stem itself. If you add any height to the stem there is a potential if you're a little bit impatient and you put the keycap straight back on there's a very strong chance that you're going to glue the stem to the switch and make a right mess of it. So that is one thing to definitely do if you are using any glues do pay very close attention to the drying and curing times. I would say for safety's sake, leave at least 24 hours between actually using the adhesive or glues on the keycaps and before actually trying them out on your keyboard. Now I know some of you are gonna be a little bit impatient and gonna to wanna to try and do it straight away, but seriously, don't do it. You potentially could actually stick your keycap to your keyboard and could ruin it. So yeah, please, please don't do that. Do follow the manufacturer's guidelines to drying times, curing times, and their full hardening times, which is a very big consideration because again, this plastic is fractured. You are gonna to wanna to let the glue set entirely. Most glues will get to kind of like 80% of their strength within the first 24 hours. So ideally, if you can leave it for maybe two days, that would be absolutely perfect. But again, some of you may wanna use your caps a little bit earlier, but just do pay close attention to those drying times. So with our keyboard, we had two keys, like I said before. So one of them is the left arrow key. The other one is our delete key. Now the delete key we've done with the JB and the other key, the arrow key, we've just used some of the Yoohoo glue. And we're gonna test them out and see what they're like. So I've got to leave these to dry now for about 24 hours or so. So yeah, it's really tempting. It does appear, it's been on here a couple of hours now, it does appear that it's dry. It isn't tacky or anything but I'm pretty sure it hasn't reached its peak effectiveness at the moment. So I don't want to try them just yet, just in case we fracture them and then we have to go back to square one and take even more time. So we're going to pause this video now, leave them overnight, and then we'll come back to it and see what they're like tomorrow. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we should have saved our keycaps and also potentially saved ourselves 30 quid on a new set. So we'll be back after the break. Okay, so we're back a little bit later. It's not exactly the next day, I'm not going to lie is a little bit later. Don't do as I do, do as I say. The final result, actually not too bad at all. And our delete key is working okay. There's a little, very, very slight kind of notch I can feel on the key now. Now the way to get around this or to actually make your keys actually travel correctly when you're done is when the glue is dried and set or at least partially set, do kind of scrape around the outside edges a little bit. You might need a small nail file, that would be perfect, or maybe uh, some other kind of abrasive, and just try and rub down the sides a little bit. So if you imagine where the cross is of the actual stem, if you kind of do north, south, east, west, and just file it flat on each of those, because the actual stem, when it's attached to the key switch, kind of goes down inside, if there's any glue which is actually protruding past that kind of narrow tolerance, you will find that the key stick a little bit. Now obviously if your fracture is too wide and you do need that extra bit of glue to kind of reinforce it, then really the only options are, again, it's not ideal, probably trying the cling film method or perhaps a very, very small drop of glue actually inside the cap itself, right to the bottom of the stem. So just the top part of the actual switch and the very kind of the uppermost part of the stem are glued together. But again, a very, very tiny little drop or potentially go down the route with either sellotape or cling film over the top of the actual stem on the switch and try that to see how you get on. This isn't a perfect job. I'll be completely honest with you wholeheartedly, but for a keyboard which retails somewhere in the region of about 120 to 140 pounds, depending where you buy it from, we picked this up for an absolute bargain for about £50 on Facebook Marketplace and for the sake of a little bit of time and effort with a drop of glue just to make sure that all the keys are fitting as they should, I think it's fantastic. And even if further down the line we need to possibly invest in maybe a three or four pound individual keycap or perhaps even splash out and get some uh, 
pudding caps, pick those up as well. HyperX themselves do actually a really nice set of uh, pudding based caps, which uh, you can pick up. We did actually buy some of those for George's keyboard, which they worked really well. So we could potentially invest in those. They do look really nice. A little bit more expensive, around about £30, £40, but yeah. For the sake of a keyboard, which doesn't need a great deal, just a little bit of TLC on those keycaps, I think we've done fantastically well. But let us know what your opinion is in the comments section below. And if you've got any really good tips for actually uh, repairing this kind of damage to a keyboard, let us know because it'll be doing uh, everyone a good service and also may even teach me a new trick or two. There's probably things that I don't know or have not tried. So it'll be great for you to comment and let me know what your thoughts are. So anyway, this has been how to attempt to repair the uh, key switches or keycaps on your mechanical keyboard or even a uh, memchanical keyboard. Quite often they use the same stems now, so potentially it could help you guys out as well. So again, stand off in the comments, but in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you, yes, you, in the very next video. Thanks for watching.